Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo 7 and we are finally back with some GT World Series action. It's a new season in manufacturers, it's round one at Deep Forest in reverse and this was a difficult one for me. Not a particularly a track that I've particularly driven at all on this game. We learnt this a day before the race and then obviously we did quite a bit of practice. And then we went into the races. Now, the advantage we had was there was morning races and evening races now. So we had the morning races to really try and get ourselves up to speed. And then by the time the evening races came, we found that our pace was looking a little bit better. And we managed to qualify P3 with a pretty bad lap, if I'm honest, in the second to last slot of the day. We weren't going to race the last slot because I'd done a lot of racing through the day. So I decided this would be my last race. And we needed to get a podium. It was podium or race again that we were doing. But this was going to be the last race no matter what. And let's see what we can do starting from P3. We've got a McLaren in front of us. And we've got a Ford GT which was surprisingly quick at this track. It's so fast in sixth gear. That car is absolutely rapid on the straight. But yeah, starting in P3 now. Let's see if we can work our way. And see if we can get some overtakes done in this race. Now one thing we're going to probably find is that that McLaren in front of us is probably not going to have the best top speed. You can see it fading a little bit there. So we're going to go to the left. Can we go for a move around the outside? It's going to be very difficult. We're going to actually break a little bit early and try and do a little bit of a cut back here. But no, he defends that very well, holds the line well and gets on the throttle quite nicely there. So working our way through this first hit. Now we're obviously starting on the hard tyres like most people were in this combination. Get the hard tyre out of the way. Do six laps on the hard tyre and then 12 laps on the softer tyre. Now, some people were varying that slightly. If your car could cope with a few more laps on the tyres, they were. I think the DBR9 could do a couple of extra laps. The Suzuki Swift, we actually seen on some drivers pitting lap four, which is pretty crazy as well. So for how fast that car was, it was actually able to do longer stints as well, if you looked after the tyres properly. So now, working our way at the end of lap one, you can see it's pretty much stalemate now. And we look behind us there in the mirror, we can see that it looks like the other Nissan GTR behind us had a big, massive moment on the kerb there, but just about managed to save that, regathered the car, and just dropped down, I think, a position or so there. So not a massive loss for him. But now we're working our way up the slipstream to this McLaren. You can see you can't really go for a move in this braking zone because the way the corner is, you can't lunge it in the inside because you need to have the car straightened up to slow the car down. So it was better there to really just take it nice and sensibly and try and get a stronger exit from the tight hairpin and get the move done on this straight because if you try to do a move into that braking zone more than likely you're going to end up in an incident and it really wasn't worth it you were better just to get as close as you could for this main straight and go for a move here like the mclaren's done there on the on the ford gt and he's actually managed to go for a move managed to get a slipstream from that ford gt but that ford gt has done an undercut there gone back up the inside and put himself back up to p1 so some great driving there by the ford nice clever driving saw the move coming stayed wide cut back up on the inside and gets that position back but this battling is slowing the field down massively you can see we actually had a 1.3 second gap to p4 and that is now at six seven tenths of a second so we've lost about six tenths there with them battling and we've had to back out nowhere we could really go there in that situation so just sit back behind them and try and see if we can find the way past ourselves so back onto the final straight now and um, to start lap three end of lap two and you can see the gaps pretty close at the moment we have a near miss there on that curb again that curb extremely dodgy as we now skip to lap four and you can see it's been pretty much stalemate for a few laps there we're on lap four skipped a little bit ahead here but we are getting closer to the mclaren and the mclaren does look like he's lost the slipstream to the ford so possibly going to be able to get a move done on this mclaren let's see if we can get a move done on this straight now get that slipstream get a good strong exit off that hairpin and see if we can go for a move at the end of this straight with the extra power from the nissan gtr so getting closer and closer with the slipstream you can see as soon as we get into sixth gear we should start getting very very close into sixth gear can we go for a move on the outside we're going to go fake on the left and then try and tuck up the inside here and make the move up on the inside got to get it slowed down for the apex which we do first gear second gear and we've made that move up into p2 so nice move to put us up a position there but you can see we've got a bit of a gap to that Ford GT up ahead. He's now 1.4, 1.5 seconds ahead. So we're going to have to see if we can catch him up. But he does seem to be driving extremely well in that Ford GT. That car does look pretty quick here. And I think it was actually in the top 10 on the time trial leaderboard. So potential on that car, definitely there for this track. And if someone's driving it well, which P1 looks like he is, as we have a bit of a moment there going through the corner, nearly lost the rear, but just about managed to save it and keep the car pointing in the right direction and the good thing is that mclaren hasn't got the fastest top end so we should be able to stay in front of the mclaren on this long straight now 
as we go up the uphill section into the hairpin. Let's take a little look as we work our way up here and you can see he's not really getting close enough and not going to be able to go for a move. So we're going to skip ahead again to lap six and to the pit stop phase now. So we're going to go in the pits. Nissan GTR behind us has stayed out going for an extra lap and we're going to pit about 1.6, 1.5, 1.6 seconds behind the Ford GT. So out of the pits we come on the soft tyres now. We're going for the 12 laps on the softs. Can we make this work? Now I was struggling a little bit with tyre wear for this combination. I have to say, since the last update, I have found that my tyres are wearing extremely quickly compared to some other drivers. So maybe something I need to change or look at there to try and help the tyre wear. But yeah, we are quite aggressive on tyres, but it didn't really matter. We knew we could do 12 laps, but I wasn't sure if this Ford GT could do 12 laps because there was a lot of drivers that were struggling to do like longer stints with that car in front. So it's gonna be interesting if he can manage that work and make it work. But one thing he has got is he's got no dirty air. So with the MR cars, if you're not in a slipstream, it helps them because you keep the rear grip a bit more. If he had dirty air, he probably would have suffered a little bit more with them rear tires. So let's see how this goes as we're getting very, very close to him here. Seems to be having a little bit of a slow out lap, not really pushing the limits, taking it very easy. Maybe that is one way to help look after the tires for the MR cars. Make sure you bring them up to temperature nice and slowly without overdriving them possibly. Because as soon as you get anywhere on the rear tires on an MR car, they tend to wear really, really quickly. So early phase of the race, probably a good idea to look after them like he is doing here. But you can see as we came out the pits, we have got the Aston Martin behind us now. Now he pitted extremely early. I think he pitted lap four. So his tires are gonna be extremely worn but they're still going to be fast enough at this at this stage of the race, especially with the Aston Martin DBR9, because it is particularly good on tyres, I think, on softer tyres. So we'll see how this goes as we go into the hairpin, getting very close to that Ford GT. We're going to have a little look up the inside there, trying to get a better exit than him. And now we're going to have the slipstream all the way down the straight. But we've also got the DBR9 right behind us there, who's going to be looking to see if he can go for a move. This is going to be interesting as we get to the end of this race. Can the Nissan GTR use that sixth gear and get past this Ford GT. We're a little bit behind, but we're gonna go for a lunge up the inside, down into first gear, and make sure that we give him space on the outside without hitting him, because we did break quite late, but we wanted to make sure we gave him space. But now we're on the inside, right up against the curb. A little bit of contact there, but we were right up against the curb. I don't think there was much we could do about that. And we managed to make that position up into P4, technically P1, so that was a nice move. And now we've got to see if we can pull away from the Ford GT, which is gonna be incredibly difficult because in a slipstream, I imagine that Ford GT to be incredibly fast on the main straight. So the thing we wanted to do was try and give him some dirty tires for the rear tires to make them wear quicker. But unfortunately, that car is just so, so quick on the straights. You're gonna see now, as we make our way on the straight now, we get a reasonably good exit off there, but just watch the straight line speed from the Ford GT with the sixth gear. And one of the problems with the Nissan GTR at this combo was on the uphill section here. In sixth gear, it started to fade, so you can see the speedo, it starts dropping down to 157, and that Ford GT just goes straight past us. No defense at all against that Ford GT on that straight. We're gonna try and go deep, and then cut back a little bit here, and see if we can get a run on the straight again. Can we go for a move on him this time? We're actually a little bit closer than the previous lap, which might actually hurt us, because you wanna get that slipstream, and be in sixth gear in the slipstream. We're gonna have to break out of the slipstream a bit here, you can see going to the left and we just don't have that power to get past that Ford GT. Ford GT a bit too quick on the straight. So we're gonna to go to the left, try and go around the outside. Can we make that work? But the DBR9 goes a little bit aggressive up the inside there. And yeah, he makes that move. It was overall fair, I think, but it was a little bit aggressive, especially with the worn tires that he's probably got on there. But yeah, at this stage, bad news for us. We're obviously down to P3 and we've got a car in front of us that's got two, old, two lap older tires, I think. So he's gonna start fading. So we need to get back past this DBR9 as quick as we can. And we've also got now popcorn behind us in the other Nissan GTR with one lap fresher tires than what I've got. So that's gonna be a car that we're gonna to have to keep an eye on as we get through to the end of the race. So back onto the straight here now and using the slipstream to the DBR9, can we find the way past? We need to really get on with this because these early laps have been very, very slow. The out lap was incredibly slow. The first lap of 25.4, we should be doing 23 nines, 24 zeros on the first laps on these fresh soft tires. And we're losing 1.5 to two seconds a lap pretty much every lap at the moment. It's very, very, very slow pace. As we have a little look in the mirror there, McLaren goes for a move on the Nissan GTR. Is he gonna make that stick? He makes it up the inside, but just doesn't have the acceleration coming out the corner and that Nissan GTR keeps the position. But what that does do, 
it knocks the GTR a little bit further back so we don't have to worry about it in the braking zone. However, we're not really close enough into this corner. Is the DBR9 going to have a go at the Nissan G uh, the, the Ford GT up ahead? He's not going to make a move there. Now, that is the thing with that. This, the DBR9 was incredibly fast in fifth gear. In a slipstream, that car is rapid in, in fifth gear, but then in sixth gear, it fades a little bit. So I think you don't even go into sixth gear at all on this track with that car. But you can see, working our way through this section now, this is where the tyres should start affecting the DBR9 a little bit. And you can see there, a little bit of a moment on the DBR9, losing control of the rear, where that tyre wear is starting to kick in a bit because he's got older tyres. So it's going to be interesting if he can hang on in that car. I don't think he's going to be able to hang on as well um, with the pace that he needs to do. So try and get a strong exit from that final corner and work our way back up this straight. And you look, again, you can see the pace just is really not there. We should be doing very low 24s, at least another half second probably off what we should be doing. That's our fastest lap of the race and still wasn't particularly fast. So yeah, we've lost about three or four seconds, I think, so far in this race at this point of the race. But this is what happens when you've got a track with a lot of slipstream. You're going to have battling and you're gonna lose time. So we need to try and see if we can find a way of getting past this DBR9 and putting P1 under pressure. But you can see on the straights, again, we're picking up the sip stream, but again, we're not gonna be close enough to go for a move. And you can see the GTR behind us also, just playing it safe, going for that wider line, probably looking after his tires a bit by taking a wider line and less, less pressure on the rear tires on acceleration then. Again through here, DBR9 looking a little bit sketchy. Looks like he's struggling a little bit through this section of track and we're getting very, very close to him, but just can't really do much. There's no real overtaking opportunities through here. The Ford GT at the front there, getting a little bit off track there, kicking up some dust again, but he does look like he's driving quite smooth in P1 there. And he's not, obviously, he's got no dirty air, which is massively helping him out with the tyres. We've got that double slipstream, which is gonna be fading our front and our rear tyres on the front. When the P2 gets a little bit messy on the exit, that's gonna help us get the run and we're back up to P2. So now we need to try and get away from that DBR9 and see if we can go after P1. Can we make it work? So this is gonna be interesting. Can we find a way of getting ahead of him and pushing and see if we can just get close to P1? It's gonna be very difficult though. You can see onto the brakes, we have to go a little bit defensive there just in case he went for a move back up the inside. Lost a bit of the rear on the exit there but just about enough to hold it. So now we're going into the braking phase. We can see we've got a bit of a gap to the car behind, so we're not gonna go defensive. However, he does lunge one up the inside there, hits us in the side. That was a little bit too much, I think. And I think he might even back out there because I think he realized it was a little bit too aggressive. So he backs out and in the process of backing out, I think he actually knocked the other GTR into the barrier. So yeah, we're back up to P2. And now we've got a bit of a gap. And now at this point, with a bit of a gap to the car behind, I know that his tires are fading. And I felt like our tires with in clean air, which we kind of are now, we're 1.4 seconds behind P1. We are picking up a little bit of slipstream, but it won't be enough to really cause us too much harm when we're getting on the throttle. So at this stage now, we've just got to try and push and get away from the car behind and see if we can catch or get close to P1 if possible. But it's gonna be very difficult. That Ford GT looks like it is driving incredibly well at this stage. And he's had no slipstream to really put any pressure on them tires. So let's see now into the braking phase, taking this corner a lot more aggressive now because we've got no one in front of us. So we can really push the braking, get it into the apex, get on the throttle. No real loss of traction now that we're not in the dirty air and yeah keep pushing so we're going to skip to lap 15 and you can see by lap 15 we've built up quite a big gap to p3 it's about 1.5 seconds and we've got about 1.4 1.5 to p1 we're maintaining that gap to p1 but we're just not able to get close enough to really pick up a, a strong slipstream from him as soon as we did we got to about 1.2 seconds on one lap i think but then we just got a little bit of loss of aero a little bit of loss on the power and we just couldn't get close enough so yeah, trying my hardest at this stage. This track, not particularly one of my favorite tracks, I have to say, but I was pretty happy with the progress we've made throughout the day. And at this stage here, we're in P2. If we can hold on to a P2, this will be a pretty solid result. So again, out the final corner, onto the main straight, 1.7 seconds behind P1. Let's see if we can hold on to this. So over the line, and you can see there, 1.7 seconds. We're gonna skip ahead again, a little bit further on in the race. We're up to the end of lap 16 and the gap is still around about the 1.6, 1.7, 1.8 margin. We've not really been losing time to P1. We've just not been able to get close enough. But more importantly, we've built up a nice gap to P3. You can see that gap 
is at 2.8 seconds, I think 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, and it's just increasing. So at this stage, it's looking like as long as we keep the car on the track and we don't make any mistakes, we should be able to get ourselves a P2 at least out of this race. You can see I'm still pushing at this stage. The tires are getting extremely worn. You can see that on the bottom left there. Tire wear is looking pretty bad, but the Ford GT up ahead is not losing any pace on them tires. He's doing an incredible job looking after the tires with that car. He pitted the same lap as us and he's doing a very good job because that car is not the nicest car once the tire wear kicks in. So incredible job keeping that car facing the right way and keeping the pace that he's doing as well because he's not really losing any pace. You can see 1.7, 1.8, it's staying around that gap and we're not able to get any closer but we are pulling away from the cars behind. Once we're in clean air, we found that we, you, you can see the pace just instantly 24 ones and we were and that was after quite a few laps on the tyre. So it shows you how much time we were losing when we were in that battle. So yeah, a lot of lost time on the early laps on the soft tyres. But as soon as we were in clean air, we were able to push on and we were able to build up a bit of a gap. You can see the gap to P3, P4, nicely, um, nicely gained gap there. Now we're on to the final lap. You can see we decided to back out of it on lap 18. There was no point pushing because the tyres were starting. You can see the tyres, they were completely dead. But we managed to take a P2 very very happy with that result i have to say because i did not expect to get a podium from this combination after the first days of practice that we did on this track so yeah pretty solid result p2 and some reasonably nice points we come away with 341 points now the next round is going to be a lot more difficult at road atlanta because four wheel drive is going to be good there over a lap but fuel the Nissan GTR's fuel is nowhere near as good as some other cars, so it's going to be a very, very difficult one on that one. I don't think, I don't know how we're even going to do it because you've got the Subaru WRX and the Suzuki that are just going to dominate that race, I think. But we'll see how it goes. Let's see what happens. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you all for more videos in the future. Thanks again for watching, everyone.